Uh, our next presenting guest is already waiting for us online. Uh, it will be a virtual presentation and it will be the attorney Diane Miller and she will be speaking about law and public policy for TCIM and a legal advo uh, advocate's perspective in 2023. Hello? Can we, Hello. do we have a connection? Can you hear me? Yes, there is a little de good. delay, but we, we can hear you. Thank you, welcome. All right. Great, <laughs> good morning. Good morning, everybody. I'm here broadcasting from the United States. It's very early in the morning, um, and I've been watching through the sum of the night. It's a wonderful presentation that everyone is giving, and it's an honor to be here. Thank you for, uh, to Thomas uh, Pfeiffer and Dr. Bashwadi for inviting me to this wonderful World Health Congress 2023 Prague. Um, I am an attorney here with National Health Freedom Coalition and National Health Freedom Action. There are two organizations in the United States. One is an educational teaching people about laws and health, and the other is a lobbying organization helping people that want to change laws. And so I have a uh, PowerPoint presentation that we, I can go through with you, and I'm delighted to be here. I wish I was there with you in person, and I hope you're having a wonderful day. I know it's towards the end of your afternoon, and it's just beginning here. So I represent these two organizations as their advisor now. I'm a founder, it's their 30 years old. <clears throat> and I'll, I begin by asking the question from a person's point of view, where do people turn when they need healing? They, they seek trusted sources. <clears throat> Excuse me. Many of you have spoken today so eloquently about the the healing options for consumers. People go usually to friends, family, and community trusted healers before they reach out to experts. But now they reach out to experts in the pharmaceutical and surgical medicine in many countries because that is market dominant. And that's what's available to them for a quick fix. And what this Congress is representing is all this wonderful other age old medicine called integrative medicine or complementary and alternative healthcare medicine or traditional medicine that um, all kinds of people are now waking up to and remembering and going back to in order to be healed. The Part of my work is because of the bias and suppression in cultures and in marketplaces against these age-old healing um, methods. So many people think healing is an art. Like a holistic practitioner will look at the, in, in the whole thing and, and like your presenters were saying, as technology advances, we're realizing each human is so unique. So it takes a, a very conscious and discerning practitioner to help a person move into what they come to as healing. Other people think healing is a science and some people think there is only one way to get better and there's gotta be a perfect answer and then you'll get better. Today, I'm going to talk about healing as law, a very different topic than those practitioner topics. All countries, most countries, have a constitution, which is the law of their land. And that constitution in your country <clears throat> or in your locality gives them the authority to make and enforce laws. In the United States, we have the First Amendment to our constitution. It says, Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof or abridging the freedom of speech or the press or the right of people to assemble, 
in the healing world, all of these are relevant. A person's religious, their belief systems, their ability to get together with people, their ability to say they know about something. So these are very important laws. And how are they playing out um, in, in the world is important to understand. The question is, why are uh, traditional complementary integrative medicine practitioners and products shut down, ignored, and vilified? I ask people to look to the law. <clears throat> Everything is not just public policy and money. Well, actually, laws are made because of money, but um, we want to make sure that people are looking to the law and know what their laws say and why they are being treated as they are. Some of the impacting healing laws in our country and in many countries are constitutional law, federal country laws, emergency health power laws, uh, federal agencies like the Federal Drug Administration, state occupational laws for licensing boards, for practitioner boards, civil law for damages, and federal criminal laws and state criminal laws. So you see there's a lot of laws regarding healing. I would like to focus on three, three areas, just very briefly, products, practitioners, and the right to refuse personal freedoms. In Minnesota, we have a, a law that says that notwithstanding any law, Individuals have a fundamental right to refuse medical treatments, testing, physical or mental exams, vaccinations, participation in experimental procedures. This law came into um, focus a lot when the pandemic came because many people didn't know what the government's role was in their personal lives. And they didn't know that they had bodily autonomy to do what they thought was best for their health. And so this is a very important law in the state that I live in, Minnesota, USA. We have, during the pandemic, a right to refuse.org project, and it shows how people went to their legislators, they went to their countries, and they started to pass laws to make sure that they could do what they wanted for their healing choices so that they could address their issues instead of having it mandatory of what they would do. And you can see that so many states here have passed right to refuse laws. Another area of law is product law. And in our country, the term drug is says, any article intended for the use and diagnosis, cure and treat an, a disease and articles intended to affect the structure function. That would mean years ago and 40 years ago, they were shutting people down for using simple herbal remedies and foods to cure people and to mitigate their pain. And so the law was changed. We put three little words in there other than food. So we took food out of the drug definition just to protect the healing rights of people. So now <clears throat> homeopathic remedies are still regulated in the United States as drugs. They're unapproved drugs, and we have a fight going on in terms of changing that law to make sure they're generally regarded as safe with presumptions of safety. But here in the United States, all of the dietary supplements, vitamins, minerals, and amino acids are now regulated as foods. That means the presumption is safety for food, and the government has to show harm before they take it off the market. They're generally regarded as safe. There's another area called occupation law, shutting down practitioners. So here's an example of laws that started 100 years ago in many countries, many <clears throat> states in the United States. The practice of medicine, it's defined. Anyone who offers or undertakes to prevent ice creek or treat or any means, methods or devices, the defect of any person. If you're not a licensed physician, you could be charged criminally for healing someone else. So we went and changed that law. We put an exemption in for complementary and alternative health care 20 years ago here in Minnesota. And so now there's a safe harbor for acupressure, anthroposophy, aromatherapy, Ayurveda, cranial sacral, 
and many, many healing practices that otherwise would have criminal charges. This was a very landmark case, and now there's 13 states who have followed suit. In terms of licensed practitioners, they have unique privileges and restrictions because they are doing sometimes dangerous things. So the, the laws delegate the authority to executive boards, and these boards decide whether a practitioner is practicing within their occupation, whether they have their required education and exams, they can enforce them, they have grounds for disciplinary action, so <clears throat> let's look at the grounds for disciplinary action. This is always a lot to look at when you're a practitioner. In Minnesota, you could be charged, you could lose your license if you are not conforming to a minimal standard of acceptable and prevailing medical practice in which proceeding actually injury to a patient need not be established. This sentence was used to shut down mercury-free dentists chelating therapy people, people who were using off-label drugs. So this is a very important law. So we have spent some time drafting laws to expand and protect people who are doing holistic healing. And we have safe harbor for licensed practitioners in an expanded practice model law so that they can practice outside of their standard of care under certain circumstances and not be threatened. So our basic premise is to have the government have the burden of proof to show harm by clear and convincing evidence before restricting products or practitioners. And when I want to just say that when people are out there trying to promote public policy, and to make changes happen. It's extremely important that they look to the law to see what they're up against, because no matter what financing uh, comes forward on human subjects for experimentation, or no matter what project you're involved in, you have a backdrop of laws. And these laws, a lot of these laws were promoted to support the dominant pharmaceutical surgical model maybe 80 years ago. And so those laws have to be kind of rolled back to protect the indigenous and the traditional and the integrative and holistic approaches to healing. I really appreciated the comments about technology advancing AI, how how we're becoming so clear that a person is an individual unique to themselves and the age old millions of years old brain of the human form understands this and so when people are moving through their healing journey now they are looking for you they are looking for that holistic approach because they they feel good and they feel heard when they go forward to find healing. Our organization helps design legislation for the future so that we can keep up with protection of the age old wisdom while technology is advancing in our world. Um, we work with many groups across the country and internationally. And I believe that laws and customs must be carefully reviewed, revised, and even repealed if necessary, and new laws created to reflect the development, evolution, and spiritual maturation of a people. These are our organizations. We'd love you to contact us if you have questions. And like I said, it's an honor to be here today with you. And I hope you all have really good time together in Prague. Thank you. And the bell didn't even go off. I made it. Thank you so much, um, Attorney Miller. Uh, we have some time left, so if um, 
Anybody would like to propose a question or contribute? I know many of you are not aware of what's happening in the USA, but I want all of you to know that Ms. Diane Miller has been responsible and in deeply involved in 11 of the 50 states of the US having na uh, freedom laws, health freedom laws, that allow practitioners of whatever healing art to practice without legal um, severe consequences, and that's called health freedom, and these safe harbor laws are there because of Diane's work. She absolutely was responsible for Minnesota's law that allows homeopaths and various practitioners that she mentioned, and she is a pioneer in this field, and I give you my deep pronouns, Diane, for your work, for everyone. Thank you. Thank you to be here today. I'm excited for your gathering and for your commitment to getting healing to all of us and the people on the planet. And the, the depth of understanding in the uh, presenters today as I listened in the early morning is profound and I'm, I'm just very excited. Today is the 30th anniversary of the first time I ever took a case forward of a farmer who was being prosecuted for practicing medicine without a license because he was curing a congressman with his raw milk. <laughs> so. Thank you so much. Thank you for your contribution. And uh, it is a true honor to have guests speaking and presenting their expertise from their fields and uh, being pioneers in a, in a better tomorrow medical care. Thank you so much. Um, if anybody would like to um, ask any questions, we encourage you to do so. You can uh, do that through the web portal, um, which is the website itcim.org slash q. Anybody from the members of the presidium may ask in person if anybody would like to um, okay. Isabel uh, no uh, th thank you so much it's it's very touchy uh, touching for me to first to realize um, how so many uh, countries in the world, you know, uh, moving forward uh, together, specifically um, how to um, value uh, their... Um, I this is from the studio. Uh, Ms. Dan already left Zoom, so we can't ask her any more questions. Okay. Sorry for that. Thank you. Okay. Okay, uh, it was just to, to say, um, you know, this, um, yeah, th this focus to, to revitalize or enfin, to value uh, specifically of each country in the world, the indigenous knowledge, traditional um, practice, you know. Uh, it's 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 amazing because the movement is here and I can, uh, when you discuss with... Uh, each of you, you know, and how we, it is challenging. It is really challenging, including when you are in your country, to just say it's just natural way, you know, to, to use, you know, what we know, you know, in terms of knowledge. And I, I, I hope, uh, specifically with the presentation, we have uh, seen about the law and the importance of, you know, uh, our right, human right. Uh, to, to move forward on this initiative, you know, for all the different countries in the world and uh, to have more balance, uh, you know, in, in, um, in this challenge we face. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, <laughs> <which way>? <laughs> <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.
Rád bych zdůraznil, že právě to... I would like to stress that this is one of the main reasons why the Congress takes place in Prague so as to be able to provide for the, the environment that will be equal to the safe haven to all of us. And uh, this is a, a goal which we pursue not just for the Czech Republic, but indeed for the whole of Europe and for the whole world. So thanks once again, Diana, even though you don't, or Diana, sorry, even though you don't hear me anymore.